Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. So here you join me from my office at home. Um, yeah, so this video we will be going on location and coming back here because of the video on when I shot on the day didn't quite work out and this video I can actually throw a few extra things in which you will see at the end of the video. So what I want to talk to you about today is the Lee Mist Filters. So they're in this little pouch here, there's three filters and I'm going to show you quickly uh, before we go into the field what filters you have in this kit so let me get off get started so I'll just unravel it and uh, the first filter is the uh, like the vignette it's what they call the uh, uh, Lee uh, mist clear spot so I don't find this works for me all I seem to get is just a partial vignette in the corners I don't know why, maybe it needs to go further to the centre, maybe I just don't have the right uh, lens or setup for it, but I I don't have the need, uh, no need for it. But the next two filters I use quite a bit. So um, this is the next one, they call it the uh, Miss Stripe, I call it the Strip. Uh, as you can see, it's this little strip down the middle of the filter here, um, and this works for um, horizons when you just want to... Uh, soften it off a little bit um, as you'll see in the video um, where it's actually really beneficial um, yeah so that's the strip one um, I'll better be careful putting that back um, and then the next one is the graduated mist so as you can see here I'll try and keep it along with my speaker in the background there so you can see so at the top it's quite thick and then it sort of fades out to the middle here um, it still has a bit of a line across there I think that's to uh, make the nice transition as well when combined with the strip filter um, yeah so this works really nicely um, I should mention as well this video is not sponsored by Lee filters they don't even know I'm doing this I'm not an ambassador for them um, I bought these with my hard-earned money um, it costs around 300 Australian dollars for this um, so yeah with this video um, you'll see me on location I was down in, um, in Mandra down at Kriri wetlands um, the, the conditions weren't ideal on this particular day but I just wanted to sort of illustrate it um, but near the end of the video as well we do have go over some of my other images I have taken with this so you can see uh, what what it actually does and each of these days as well there was no fog there was no mist it was just uh, pretty stale, stale conditions really um, the conditions where you wouldn't normally go out and shoot misty and you, you know you wouldn't think there was mist but I really like the way that these filters are, act so yeah let's get stuck into the video now you'll see me on location Right, so now we've set the camera up, we've got, uh, I'll, let you t I'll let you know what I've got on there. So now I'll put my six stop on there. I just want to smooth out some of the bits of the scene, maybe get a bit of motion in the clouds. Just a little bit, I don't need much. Right, first thing to do, we'll set up the camera, just do our test shot. So remember we have the six stop in here, so that's gonna reduce our uh, light capacity by six stops. Um, gathering ability, so what Lee recommends for these filters is around F9 to F11. Um, so we're gonna go, probably f11 um, if we do go with a smaller a larger aperture say f5.6 or f4 it will just show up soft what these filters are doing is, is you want those little the little specks on the filters to sort of show up a little bit um, yeah that's what gives you the mist effect otherwise it just gives a soft look and I've tried it and it looks like rubbish so yeah we'll um, so f11 so this is going to be the, the shot you'll see now is going to be the shot 
that has no filters, no mist filters I mean, um, apart from the ND filter. So I'll just, uh, I should probably go with a square crop here actually. Um, it, I think it's going to suit the scene quite nicely with what I've got in front of me. So do that. A uh, fourth of a second. Gonna need, I'll bring up my grid just to help me with the composition a little bit. Tree in the middle. It's a bit of a high key sort of shot this one's going to be. So it's going to be more of a black and white composition I, I think. Or a black and white edit later on. Um, just check the focus again. Yeah, we're all good. Depth, depth of field, but yeah. And self timer. I was trying to say depth of field, um, depth of field preview. As you can tell, I've also got my other tripod out, so I've got my more light duty one today. So we'll see what we do get. So this is what you'll see next. And now let's pop in the. Um, the mist filter so what we'll probably do is I will show you the grad and then um, you can see what that looks like and then um, I'll shift my composition over just to the left a little bit and you can see what it looks like with this strip one and then we'll add the grad as well um, but also you can do long exposures with this and it's worked really well for me I can show you a shot that I got uh, later on um, that works really well you know, using a 15 stop and these filters so let me get the filter So we've got our mist uh, grad, so I'm going to pop this in the camera now. Uh, right, I think that's in the right groove. Yeah, there we go, that feels better. So the trick is to look through your viewfinder um, and see at what point it starts to um, you know, take effect of your image. Uh, so you don't want to overdo it. You've got to find that nice even balance. You want to make it look natural. Um, it, so as you can tell, there's no fog around here, there's no mist. Um, but these filters do an amazing job of bringing that sort of um, effect to life. Now the reason why you might want to use these is maybe you've, you've put so much planning into this uh, one location and you were wanting fog, you've been maybe driving four or five hours to get there. Um, uh, you maybe got up really early as well because uh, that's essential for fog normally and um, you get there and it's just clear um, but these filters will allow you to get um, your shot most of the time um, with exceptions so yeah we'll bring the filter down just try and find that happy medium we can bring it all the way down um, I'm getting it to about there I'm happy with um, and I'll probably take the shot. Yeah, so the shutter speed didn't really change too much. I'd brought it down by a third of a stop. Um, but yeah, so that's how it works, and you'll see the image now on your screen. And uh, yeah, so now I'll move the camera over to my. Um, left a little bit and then we'll introduce the graduated of uh, the strip so you can see what that effect has on the scene so you join me as i'm editing this uh, video and this is where i've got to put this insert into it so at this point when i turn the camera over to the left uh the images didn't work out at all they you, you couldn't tell the difference with the mist filters um which is a bit sad I'll, I'll, as i wish they uh, did work out um, but as you'll see in the next bit of this video near the end um, that the images I took some other images which should show you in a lot better way um, yeah so uh, let's get back into this video and then you'll see me at the end uh, when we'll just do a recap of what happened and do a slideshow of some of the other images that I've taken uh, with these filters um, I've just taken uh, two different shots so one I had the filter up a little bit higher the grad um, the other one is a little bit lower down. It gives a slightly, um, a completely different sort of feel. Um, looking on the back of the camera, it's not too sure, but I really quite, I actually quite like both of them, to be honest. Um, yeah, and I'll actually maybe take a shot while we've still got just a little bit of the cloud without that strip bit in there, so you can see what it does. So I'll just uh, have another little look through the camera, bring that filter to where I want it to be. And there we go, we'll take that shot. 
yeah so yeah hopefully you enjoyed it um as i said earlier um feel free to ask any questions um and um, if you'd like me to do this again i most likely will um this was a bit of a rush thing really to be honest um I wanted to get out with my camera, I wanted to come here, so it wasn't like I was just coming down here to just make a video, um, yeah, I just really wanted to experiment with things, um, yeah, so, yeah, this is nice. Alright, now you can see uh, the images and how it sort of turned out. They didn't really turn out the way I wanted them to. Uh, the images that I did show, they're for more for illustration purposes than anything that would go in my portfolio. Um, they're not portfolio quality, uh, not up to my standard. So, um, yeah. Uh, so what we're going to do now is I'm going to walk you through uh, some of the photos of that I have taken uh, in the past. Um, show you some images where I haven't used mist filters and just used long exposures and talk you over the uh, areas where um, it would be beneficial if I had these filters. So my first shot will be, um, I've got this uh, photo that I'm actually going to be doing in an exhibition very soon um, and um, we're going to have it printed up nice and big. So yeah, this image is of this boat wreck in the sea in Fremantle. Now this is a really long exposure. I think it was about eight minutes or something, maybe even longer. And um, what I really liked about it was um, it was just really peaceful and the, the sea was just basically like glass. Um, and then we've got the clouds above. So if I had my Lee Mist filter, but I had the strip, I could have corrected that horizon as you will see uh, in the next image. So now you've seen that image and now you can sort of see that if I had the Lee Mist filter, I would have been able to clean that line up and you wouldn't, it wouldn't be as visible. So the transition from the sea to the sky would be a lot smoother. Um, you'd still get that horizon um, on the in the image, but wouldn't be as blunt. It wouldn't be like a sharp edge. It would be more gradient. Um, so yeah, uh, yeah. Um, the next one probably will be um, the shot that I took up at Mundaring Weir. So on this particular day, it was taken in the afternoon. Um, this one we only used the um, the graduated filter. We didn't use the um, the strip filter for this one, and um, it really brought uh, added element into those into the trees and onto the top of that little uh, building on the dam. And it really made this nice atmosphere. So I did use a longer, a long exposure for that, but not too long. Um, I think it was only just a few, couple of minutes from, from memory. Um, and it really works well for the scene, uh, complements it nicely. So I'll show you like a black and white shot, and I'll also show you a landscape. So this, this one you're going to see now is the uh, landscape one, is a black and white. Um, so that will be popping up on the screen right now. And then this next one will be in portrait. This is not a uh, black and white, this is a colour one. And so you can sort of see uh, what you get. Uh, so that will be popping up on the screen as well now. My next shot um, is something that I really love. It's of this jetty down in Mandurah. So why uh, this, the, the time of the day I shot this was basically the wrong time of the day to use these filters, but it worked actually really, really nicely. And I have no regrets uh, doing it the way I've done because it made it gritty, it made it contrasty on that jetty. I've got that separation um, with the water, between the water and the jetty, I've got a nice uh, contrast. Um, and then it just fades out to the, uh, to the sky. So with this shot, I used the, um, I used the strip line uh, for the horizon, so that was my first seal to go in. Uh, so I got it in the right spot, and then I bought in my graduated uh, um, mist filters, um, and that sealed the deal for me. Um, we did use a 15 stop uh, ND filter here, no polarizing filter um, for any of these shots that I've uh, shown you here now. Um, it just didn't need it, and I want to show off the sky, so I, want, I don't want um, to remove uh, the shine because I want the clouds to sharpen my water. And uh, yeah, so that's basically it. Um, 
Uh, hopefully you found it enjoyable, maybe you learnt something, maybe you want to actually go out and get these leaf filters. So if you do want to get them, the only place I've managed to find them on is uh, B&H Photo. So I had to buy mine from America, there were no other stores that sold them, I couldn't find them on eBay or anything. Um, yeah, a bit of a downer, uh, no, none of the camera shops actually here in Australia have heard of them. Um, and quite a lot of people don't even know these filters exist. Um, I don't know, maybe it's from the film era, but me personally, I like to get my both my shots right in camera and then just do a bit of touching up in uh, editing. Um, it's just me. Um, you could do this in Photoshop, but I like to like to do it on location. It makes it a bit fun. Adds another bit of uh, enjoyment to the um, occasion of taking the photograph because every photo that you take is an, like an occasion in a way. So yeah, if you've been, if you've liked this video, be sure to give it a like. That really helps me out. Feel free to subscribe, and if you'd like, ask me. Feel free to comment. Um, uh, if you've got any questions, uh, do so in the comments. Um, also, I am on Instagram, so you can find me at Simon Phillips Photo. Um, not Simon Phillips the drummer. So don't message me if you're asking uh, for drumming advice, because I sadly I won't be able to give that to you. Um, yeah. So yeah. Uh, well, I'm going to let you guys go, and I'll see you in the next one. Okay, bye for now.